Senators are currently in a quorum call. They are working today on the FAA reauthorization bill, and a final vote could come later this evening. The White House has announced some travel plans for the president. President Obama and the First Lady will be making a state visit to Britain in May at the invitation of Queen Elizabeth. Prime Minister David Cameron's office said it is pleased that Mr. Obama has accepted the invitation to visit the UK. The president will be visiting in May, uh, May 24th through the 26th, and the trip will come just before a G8 summit in France, which President Obama is expected to attend.
As this quorum call continues in the Senate, over in Michigan, their new Republican governor says that he'll accept just a $1 salary this year as part of his call for a, quote, shared sacrifice to help erase a massive budget shortfall. Governor Rick Snyder, who is a millionaire and former businessman, made the announcement today as he unveiled a $45 billion budget proposal that cuts hundreds of state jobs and asks public employees for concessions. Leader. I should have consent to call the quorum be terminated. Without objection. First of all, Ms. Ms. President, I express my appreciation, as I have before, to the manager of this bill. Sir, Rockefeller's worked so hard for so long on this bill, years. I appreciate the work done by the ranking member of this committee, Senator Hutchison, who has worked with him for years on this legislation. I ask unanimous consent that pending amendments be set aside and Senator Coburn be recognized to offer his amendment number 64. Then after the amendment is reported, the Senate proceed to a vote in relation to the Coburn Amendment and that no amendments be in order to the Coburn Amendment prior to the vote. Upon disposition of the Coburn Amendment number 64, the pending amendments be set aside and Senator Coburn be recognized for up to 10 minutes to offer amendments number 80 with a modification which is at the desk, number 81 and number 91. Senator Schumer be recognized for up to two minutes to offer number, amendment number 71. Senator Brown of Ohio will be recognized for up to two minutes to call up the Brown-Portman Amendment number 105, to the Ensign Amendment number 32, and the Reed Amendment, Reed of Nevada, number 54, and the Udall Amendment number 51 be modified with the changes that are at the desk. The Wyden Amendment number 27 be withdrawn, and the Senate then proceed to votes in relation to the following amendments in the order listed. Brown-Portman, Ensign, Reed, Udall, number 49, Udall number 51 as further modified, Coburn number 80 as modified, Coburn 81, Coburn 91, and Schumer 71. <clears throat> that further there be two minutes equally divided prior to each vote listed above. The notwithstanding rule 22, the Leahy Inoff Amendment number 50 remain in order. That upon disposition of the Schumer number 71, there be 10 minutes of debate equally divided prior to a vote in relation to the Leahy Inoff Amendment number 50. The Leahy and Hoffman Amendment be subject to a 60 vote threshold for passage, that if it does not achieve 60 affirmative votes, the amendment be not be agreed to, and that there be no amendments in order to any of the amendments listed in the agreement prior to the votes. Further, upon disposition of the Leahy and Hoffman Amendment, there be no further amendments or motions in order to the bill except for manager's package to be agreed to if it has the concurrence of the majority and Republican leader that the bill then be read a third time and the Senate proceed to vote on passage of the bill as amended. The motion to reconsider be considered made and laid on the table with no intervening action or debate. And if the bill is passed, it be held at the desk. Finally, when the Senate receives the House Companion to S223 as determined by the two leaders, it be in order for the majority leader to proceed to its immediate consideration, strike all after the enacting clause and insert the text of S223 as passed by the Senate in lieu thereof. That the companion bill as amended be read a third time. <coughs> the statutory pay goal statement be read. The bill be passed. The most reconsider, reconsider be considered made, laid on the table. Upon passage, request a conference with the House on the disagreeing <coughs> excuse me, votes of the two houses, and the chair be authorized to appoint conferees on the part of the Senate with a ratio of five to four, all with no intervening action or debate.
Is there objection? Mr. President. No. Leader. No objection. There's no objection. Okay. Haven't been heard. Mr. President. Leader. I ask you to ask consent to set aside all pending amendments so that I may call up my amendment number 79 regarding Grand Canyon Economic Impact Study for air tour operators, and that be in order, notwithstanding Rule 22. Is there objection? I object. Objection is heard. President. Senator from Texas. Mr. President, until the senator from Oklahoma is ready to start, uh, I just wanted to say that I so appreciate uh, the majority leader uh, working with us, as well as uh, Senator Rockefeller, Senator Coburn, uh, all of the people who have had so many interests in this bill. I think we are finally on a glide path now, if I can use an aviation metaphor, and I am pleased to, uh, to see that Senator Coburn is on the floor because now I believe we will be able to achieve the passing of this bill uh, after a few votes tonight and I'm very grateful to everyone for staying here to finish this important document and with that Mr. President I yield the floor. Senator from Oklahoma. Thank you. Uh, I'd ask you now uh, consent to call up amendment number 64. The clerk will report. You, Senator from Oklahoma, Mr. Coburn proposes amendment number 64. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> amendment 64 is an amendment by myself and Senator Begich from Alaska. It's the orphan earmark amendment where we instruct the agencies to eliminate monies that have been sitting for nine years or longer and not expended. That's close to $500 million that we can count so far, probably a billion dollars. It helps the agencies. It's money that we have already allocated that will never be spent, that's unaccounted for. I believe we're going to have a voice vote on it, and I'd appreciate everybody's uh, 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 support of that amendment. Under the previous order. The amendment is considered adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd ask unanimous consent to call up amendment number 80. The clerk will report. As amended. The Senator from Oklahoma, Mr. Coburn, proposes amendment number 80 as modified. This is an amendment. <clears throat> we have an essential air service. Senator McCain's amendment to eliminate essential air service, which is basically a subsidy for people who drive, have to drive short distances, not long distances to airport, but we've selectively said certain people in this country can be advantaged by driving certain distances. And what this amendment as modified says, provided the secretary doesn't see extraneous severe circumstances otherwise, that if you have to be at 90 miles or greater to qualify for essential air service. We started out with 100 and we saw that there were some significant difficulties of people that actually had uh, a requirement. So what we've done is we have taken this amendment, moved it to 90 miles. 
It doesn't affect a large number of airports, but there are several within this that have minimal employments. And remember, the, the average American drives over an hour to get to the airport now. So we're saying we're not going to do it if you're driving an hour and a half, 90 miles, unless there's a circumstance the Secretary of Transportation says otherwise, like some particular places in West Virginia where it's tremendously mountainous and the time distance is not, does not meet with the average. And all it does is it lessens it. Remember, in this bill, we're increasing the amount of funds. At a time when we're going bankrupt, we're increasing the amount of funds for essential air service. So what we've done is a compromise here to extend it to those that actually need it, but also not subsidize something that we shouldn't. It affects less than 26 airports, and now less than that, now that we've modified it. And so I would appreciate your support on that, and uh, I think we will be having actual votes on that in a minute. And I'd move to call up a, Amendment Number 81. The clerk will report. The senator from Oklahoma, Mr. Coburn, proposes Amendment Number 81. Mr. President, this is another amendment on essential air service. This amendment eliminates essential air service when the average employments are less than 10 a day. 10 a day. There's no way we can afford, given our financial situation, to subsidize essential air service for the airports that have 10 a day. I know that's a disagreement around us and amongst us, especially those that are having the benefit of that subsidy today. And by the way, the subsidy is supposed to be limited to $200. But when you actually take what actually goes and happens on many of these, it's over $400. One of them is $482 per person, federal subsidy, in airports that have less than 10 employments a day. Uh, it's a common sense, given the realities of where we are today. The realities of a $1.68 trillion deficit now projected by the White House for this year. So it just makes common sense that we would do this. Mr. President, I'd call up uh, Amendment Number 91, as unanimous consent. Clerk will report. The Senator from Oklahoma, Mr. Coburn, proposes, proposes an Amendment Number 91. The Airport Improvement Program is a needed program. But what we do regularly in the Airport Improvement Program is we're incentivizing this expenditure of monies in a way that does not recognize the priorities of this country. And the way we do that is we have a cost sharing that the federal government consumes 95, pays for 95 percent of all these programs. Well, what's happened, and even in my own state, we have spent money in airports that have very few, very few landings every day. No commercial service, but very few private commercial, private uh, planes landing. And all this amendment does is says that if you're going to qualify for the AIP program for airport improvement, that over the next three years we would take that from 95 percent down to 75 percent which is well above the average of every other grant program that we have in the federal government. So it's not about trying to eliminate. It's trying to say, if we're going to get priorities, what we should do is lower the amount of federal funds so that the state or the community that wants to utilize these funds will recognize by they're going to have to pony up a little bit more of the money if, in fact, it's a legitimate thing. At 95 percent, we're having all sorts of money wasted on things that are not a priority for our country, given the financial situation where we are. And I think with that, I've, I've uh, responded in less than the time that was allocated to me, and I retain the balance of my time. Senator from New York. Senator Hutchinson for their help here. Pursuant to the previous order, I call up my amendment number 71. The clerk will report. The Senator from New York, Mr. Schumer, proposes amendment number 71. I ask unanimous consent the amendment be considered as read. Without objection. I ask consent that the reading of the amendment be way. I did that. Mr. President, I'm. <laughs> Yield back the floor.
Senator from West Virginia. President, uh, I ask unanimous consent on behalf of Senator Brown of Ohio uh, to call up the Brown Portman Amendment Number 105 to without objection to the Ensign Amendment Number 32. Clerk will report. The Senator from West Virginia, Mr. Rockefeller, for Mr. Brown, proposes Amendment Number 105 to Amendment Number 32. Notice the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Okonka. Thank you, Tim. West Virginia. I ask unanimous consent that the order of the quorum call be rescinded so that we may proceed to. Without objection. On our side. The question is on the Brown. Portman Amendment to the Ensign Amendment. With that objection, the second degree amendment is agreed to. The question is on the Ensign Amendment as amended. With that objection, that amendment as amended is agreed to. The question is on the Reed Amendment number 54 as modified. Without objection, it is agreed to. The question is on the Udall Amendment number 45, number 49, sorry, as modified. Without objection, that amendment is agreed to. Okay, the question is on the Udall Amendment number 51 as further modified. Without objection, that amendment is agreed to. The question occurs on the Coburn Amendment number 80 as modified. I ask for the yeas and nays. I move to the table. And ask for the yeas and nays. Is there a sufficient second on the motion to table? There is a sufficient second. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka. Mr. Alexander. Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Barrasso. Mr. Balkus. Mr. Beckage. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bingaman. Mr. Blumenthal. 
Mr. Blunt, Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer, Mr. Brown in Massachusetts, Mr. Brown of Ohio, Mr. Burr, Ms. Cantwell, Mr. Cardin, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey, Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Coates, Mr. Coburn, Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Coons, Mr. Corker, Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Enson, Mr. Enzi, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Franken, is he coming back? Are you just switching for a minute? He's coming back? Yes. Okay. Mrs. Gillibrand. Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley, Mrs. Hagen, Mr. Harkin, Mr. Hatch, Mr. Hoven, Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Inhofe, Mr. No Way, Mr. Isaacson, Mr. Joe Hands, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrew, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada, Mr. Risch, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Tester, Mr. Thune, Mr. Toomey, Mr. Udall of Colorado, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, Mr. Vitter, Mr. Warner, Mr. Webb, Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Wicker, Mr. Wyden.
Centers voting in the affirmative. Brown of Ohio, Landrieu, and McCain. Centers voting in the negative. Ayotte, Brown of Massachusetts, Coburn, Cochran, Cornyn, Grassley, Hutchison, Isaacson, Johans, Paul, and Ditter. Mr. Bingaman, aye. Mr. McCain, no. Mr. Kirk, no. Mr. Kyle, no. Mr. Corker, no. Mr. Wyden, Mr. Wyden, aye. Mr. Portman, Mr. Portman, no. Mr. Burr, no. <laughs> Mr. Warner, aye. Mr. Tester, no. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bennett, no. Mr. Alexander, aye. Mr. Rubio, no. Mr. Chambliss, no. Mr. Blunt, no. Mr. Shelby, no. Mr. Beckage, no. Mrs. Murray, no. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, aye. Mr. Leahy, aye. Mr. Sanders, aye. Mr. Coon, no. Yes. Mr. Luger, no. Mr. Blumenthal, aye. Mr. Nelson, Nebraska, aye. Mr. Coates, 
No. Mr. Dement, no. Jim, Mr. Manchin, listen to this. No. I'm going to vote no. Mr. Casey, <laughs> aye. Oh, you are. No, you don't. Mr. Inhofe, Mr. Inhofe, no. Mr. Sessions, no. Mr. Lee, no. Mr. Franken, no. Mrs. McCaskill, no. Mr. No Way, aye. <laughs> Mr. Toomey, no. Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, no. Mr. Baucus, Mr. Baucus, no. Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, no. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, aye. Mrs. Hagan, no. Mr. Webb. Mr. Webb, aye. Mr. Udall, New Mexico, aye. Ms. Klobuchar, no. Mr. Wicker, no. Was that a Mr. Graham, no. Mr. Hoven, no. Mr. Rish, no. Mr. Crapo, Mr. Crapo, no. Mr. Lieberman, no. Mr. Durbin, aye. Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Whitehouse, aye. Mr. McConnell, no. Mr. Levin, aye. Mr. 
Ms. Cantwell, aye. Mr. Nelson? Mr. Nelson of Florida, aye. Mr. Cardin, aye. Ms. Cantwell, no. Ms. Collins? Ms. Collins, aye. Ms. Snow? Ms. Snow, aye. Mr. Hatch? Mr. Hatch, no. Mr. Roberts, no. Mr. Moran? Mr. Moran, no. Mr. Ensign, Mr. Ensign, no. Mr. Menendez, no. Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Barrasso, no. Mr. Udall, Mr. Udall of Colorado, no. Mr. Bozeman, no. Carper. Mr. Carper, aye. Mr. Enzi, no. Mrs. Shaheen, no. Mr. Reed of Nevada, Aye. Mr. Thune. Mr. Thune, no. Mrs. Gillibrand, aye. Mr. Rockefeller, aye. Ms. Murkowski, no. Mr. Pryor, aye. Mr. Conrad, no. Mr. Akaka, aye. Mr. Schumer, aye. This is Boxer, aye.
Feinstein? Mr. Harkin. Mr. Harkin, no. Mrs. Feinstein? Mr. Carper, no. Mr. Merkley, no. Mrs. Feinstein, aye. Mrs. Stabenow, aye. Ms. Mikulski, aye. Mr. Lautenberg, aye. Are there any senators wishing to vote or to change? Order, please. Are there any senators wishing to vote or change his or her vote? If not, uh, the ayes are 34, the nays are 65, and the motion to table is not agreed to. The question is on the amendment. Without objection, the amendment is agreed to. Move to reconsider. Lay that on the table, Mr. President. Without objection. Mr. President. The, the majority leader. I would ask unanimous consent the next vote. There'll be order, please. I ask unanimous consent the next vote be 10 minutes in duration. Without objection. The question is on the, the question is on amendment number 81 offered by Senator Coburn. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, hang on. Um, all those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. no. Uh, I, I think we might need an actual vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. no. Uh, they don't. I, in my ear, heard it no. I'm sorry. Peter. In favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. No. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The amendment is agreed to. The question is on Coburn Amendment number 91. Is there a second? Well, 
Is there a second on the motion to table? There, there appears to be. The question is on the motion to table. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka. Mr. Alexander. No. Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Barrasso. Mr. Balkis. Mr. Begich. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bingaman. Mr. Blumenthal. Mr. Blunt. Mr. Bozeman. Mrs. Boxer. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts. Mr. Brown of Ohio. Mr. Burr. Ms. Cantwell. Mr. Cardin. Mr. Carper. Mr. Casey. Boxer, Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, Mr. Brown of Ohio, Mr. Burr, Ms. Cantwell, Mr. Cardin, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey, Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Coates, Mr. Coburn. Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Coons, Mr. Corker, Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo. Mr. Dement. <laughs> Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement, Mr. Durbin. Mr. Ensign, Mr. Enzi, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Franken, Mrs. Gillibrand, Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley, Mrs. Hagen, Mr. Harkin, 
Mr. Hatch, Mr. Hoven. Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Inhoff, Mr. Inouye, Mr. Isaacson, Mr. Johans, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, to decrease the federal Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrew, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill. Mr. McConnell. Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada, Mr. Risch, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Tester, Mr. Thune, Mr. Toomey, Mr. Udall of Colorado, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, Mr. Ritter, Mr. Warner, Mr. Webb, Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Wicker, Mr. Wyden, Senators voting in the affirmative. Akaka, Ayat, Begich, Bennett, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Boxer, Brown of Ohio, Carper, Casey, Conrad, Coons, Durbin, Feinstein, Franken, Gillibrand, Hagen, Harkin, Inouye, Johnson of South Dakota, Klobuchar, Cole, Landrew, Lautenberg, Leahy, Levin, 
Menendez, Merkley, Mikulski, Murray, Nelson of Nebraska, Nelson of Florida, Reed of Rhode Island, Reed of Nevada, Rockefeller, Sanders, Schumer, Shaheen, Snow, Stabenow, Tester, Udall of Colorado, Udall of New Mexico, Webb, White House, Wyden. Mr. Lieberman, aye. Mr. Warner, aye. Ms. Collins, aye. Senators voting in the negative. Alexander, Barrasso, Blunt, Bozeman, Brown of Massachusetts, Burr, Chambliss, Coates, Coburn, Corker, Cornyn, DeMint, Ensign, Enzi, Graham, Grassley, Hatch, Inhoff, Isaacson, Johans, Johnson of Wisconsin, Kirk, Kyle, Lee, Luger, Manchin, McCain, Murkowski, Paul, Portman, Roberts, Rubio, Sessions, Shelby, Toomey, Vitter. Mr. Baucus, Mr. Baucus, no. Mr. Baucus, aye. Mrs. McCaskill, Mrs. McCaskill, no. Mr. Wicker, Mr. Wicker, aye. Mr. Mr. Cochran, Mr. Cochran, aye. Ms. Cantwell, Ms. Cantwell, no. Mr. Thune, Mr. Thune, no. Ms. Ayotte, Ms. Ayotte, no. Mr. McConnell, Mr. McConnell, no. Mr. Cardin, Mr. Cardin, aye. Mr. Crapo, Mr. Crapo, no. Mr. Moran, Mr. Moran, no. Mr. Rich, Mr. Rich, no. Mr. Pryor, Mr. Pryor, aye. Mr. Hoven, Mr. Hoven, aye. Mr. Manchin, Mr. Manchin, aye. Mrs. Hutchison, Mrs. Hutchison, aye. Mr. Roberts, Mr. Roberts, aye. Mr. 
Mr. Moran, Mr. Moran. I like that. Aye. Is this have to get? Uh, is there anyone wishing to change his or her vote? If not, the ayes are 58, the nays 41. The motion to table is agreed to. The question is on the Schumer Amendment number 71. All time is yielded back. The question is on the amendment. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The amendment is agreed to. There are now 10 minutes of debate evenly divided on the Leahy Inhofe Amendment number 50. Who yields time? 